In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you how you can enhance a tutorial video by adding arrows or shapes from within PowerDirector. This comes as a request from one of my subscribers. I already have placed on track number one screen capture of a training video for Microsoft Excel. And as I move through that particular video, there may be places where I want to highlight something visually by adding an arrow or perhaps a shape so people can follow exactly what the training is delivering. How do I do that? The main tool we're going to use in this tutorial is a PIP object in our PIP objects room. You find that's the icon with the two stars on it. It's called the video overlay. You can click on it or press the F5 function key on your keyboard. Now I'm in the general category right now and we're going to look at three different subcategories that offer elements that you can use to enhance a tutorial video. Depending on the version of PowerDirector you have, you may or may not have all of these tools. If you're going to do heavy duty video tutorial, I highly recommend using PowerDirector 19 or 365 if you can afford it because it has the most tools available for this kind of video editing. I'm on the general tab now. I'm going to click down and we're going to take the subcategory in here that simply is called shape. And here I have a group of shapes available and you notice I have some familiar arrows. I'll take any one of them. Let's take the shape 05 and drag that to a video track above in the stacking order, the default stacking order above my video. I can simply change it by working with the corners and that will change the the size and shape of the arrow. I have these little yellow boxes if I notice that can change the head of the arrow or the width of the other segment of the arrow. So that's a very easy way to design it without going into any other details. But if you want to, let me show you a couple of things that you can do to modify that. I'm going to click on the Designer button. That gets me into my Shape Designer. And now I have a whole host of other things that I can do. I have, for example, a Shape Fill. And I can click over here and I can change the color inside the arrow to anything I want. Let's change it to a gray. I can also work in here and I can change the title. I can change the font. I can change the font color. Let's change it to a yellow. I can change the font style, the font size. I can make it shrink on overflow, which is a very nice feature. Or if I don't want to, I can uh, adjust it manually. We can also change other elements to this if we want to. We have a shape outline. It's a uniform color. I can change it to a two color gradient. And there is a green and a white. I'll change the white color to, let's go a blue. Click on OK. So you can make all kinds of modifications and adjustments when it comes to your shapes. We have tutorials on working in the shape designer, but that's just a quick highlight of all the things that you can do. Now, one thing I found that I wish were somewhat different is it says Power Director. I can say something like, look here. And that's great if the arrows go in a certain direction because the text always starts at the base of the arrow. But if I turn the arrow this way, there's no way I can reverse the text. I could actually put text on top of it using another layer, but uh, that's one shortcoming. I wish it were possible to reverse it. I haven't found a way to do that, but uh, that's a way in which you can begin to modify this in terms of size and shape, proportions, and uh, you can use this as a key tool. And when you're done, you can click on the Save As button at the bottom, and it will save your pre-designed arrow for use in future projects. So that's a very great tool that you have. I'll just do that for fun. We'll click on Save As. What's the name? I'll call this Test Arrow. And now it's available in multiple projects or multiple times in the same project. So now I have that. So that is a very good tool to use in the Shape Designer in PowerDirector to modify the arrows that you have. 
And uh, you notice I, now I have my test arrow here in my options, so I could click on that as much as I want. Now there's another category that you have that you can use if you have the elements in your copy of PowerDirector. Another category here is called Tutorial Creation. I'll click on Tutorial Creation and here we have some, I call them chalk-like elements. They're animated, unlike the shapes, although you can modify the shapes to some degree. And you can take these arrows and use them any way you want. Let's drag this one down and put it in our project. And when we play, we see we have an animated shape. I can highlight it and click on the Tools menu and get into my PIP Designer. And now I can modify that. There's some things I can change and some things I cannot change. I can add a shadow or a border to the arrow. You notice it does have a bit of one already, but let's just add a border and let's take a make it orange. And then I can change, of course, the size of the border and some other features. But if I want to enhance it, these are some of the small things that I can do. And of course, you can change the proportion you can change the, the way in which it rotates anything you want to to modify what you see on the screen in your tutorial video. So those are the ways in which you can modify it. Again, you can click on the Save As button to save that as a custom arrow to use in future projects. I'm going to click on OK. And so here, in this case, when we move to this section of our tutorial video, I have the arrow pop up and we have a little bit of animation going on inside the arrow. And of course we can change the duration of that object on the screen to be as long or short as we want and it will cycle through the animation as part of that particular PIP object. So that gives you another option under tutorial creation using arrows. Another part of the tutorial creation happens to be these red elements I call them chalk objects because that's what they look like when they're animated. And if you want to highlight an area that's a square or an oval or a circle or a rectangle, simply take one of these and drag it down, put it on top, and you'll see it when we move our playhead into it. And it will animate. Let's play this and you can see it starts at the upper left, upper left corner and then it goes down counterclockwise. And so it's an animated rectangle, and it's got that kind of chalky kind of look to it. There's not much I can do to modify these. I can change the size. I can change the proportion of it. I can move it to highlight the particular area that I want to focus on in my tutorial. I can change the duration. And if I get on the, into the PIP Designer by clicking on Tools, PIP Designer. There is another element I can do. I can actually add a border to it if I want to. The default is white. Let's make it black so you can see. So I can add a border. If I want to, I can change the size of the border, the color of the border. I can blur the border a little bit. So you can make some modifications. They're rather limited. They are somewhat editable. Again, I can do the Save As and save it as an element I'll use again. And then I click on the OK button when I'm done. And now when I play this, I have my slightly modified border uh, highlighting that section of the tutorial video. So these are the elements that you have. One thing I like in PowerDirector version 19 and 365 is that there's a brand new section of tools that are even more sophisticated than the ones we've shown before. When I click on Tutorial Creation, I'm going to go to a subcategory I now have available called Sketch Animation. Now in the Sketch Animation, I have these elements, but they're much more editable than I do otherwise. I'm going to take the rectangle here and drag it down and put it on my track. And when I play, I'm going to see I have what I had before. It's a very sharp, very clear, nice looking rectangle, and it's red. Well, in this case, with sketch animation, I can now do some modifications to it. 
I'm going to click on it and click on the designer button. That opens up my sketch designer. We have a tutorial I will link to in this video that gives you lots of details about the sketch designer. But without going into a lot of detail, let me show you a few things you can do. I love the fact that you can change the color. I can click anywhere in the color spectrum and change the color of that. I can change the width to any kind of width I prefer. Again, obviously we can change the size and shape of the object that we have here. If we want to perhaps highlight this section here, we can do that. And I can make it even narrower if I want to. I can also change the direction of, of the animation if it starts out with an animation, which it does by default. And we, ha we tell you how to modify those. Right now it has a one second animation and then a four seconds afterwards. Let's play that. There it animates. We can change the animation direction by clicking on flip. We have to stop it. Click on flip. And now we're going to animate it now it's clockwise. Uh, we can also change the ending effect. We can cause it to, to fade out or uh, unwind as it were when it's done at the very end. There are all kinds of variations you could do but it's a nice way to customize all of these. And you also can save what you've done as a customized animation as the other ones and then click on OK. And you have arrows as well in this particular option. If I click here, take an arrow and bring an arrow in. And in the sketch designer we can modify this. I wish this were a cleaner arrow rather than a rather odd shaped one. But you still can make the same modifications we looked at before. And save it if you want. I'll click on OK. So those are some of the ways in which you can enhance a tutorial video by adding arrows of various kinds or objects like rectangles, circles, etc. We hope this is helpful for those of you who are into tutorial creation. The tools now available in PowerDirector are much more enhanced than they ever were before and for that I'm very thankful.